Welcome to Southwest Desert, where adventure meets the arid beauty of the American Southwest. Join me as we explore Southwest's lost historical characters, stunning desert vistas, forgotten Native American history, or tales of lost gold mines. There's always something new to discover. Subscribe now and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on our latest desert adventures. Let's journey together into the heart of the Southwest Desert. Sit back and enjoy. Today we're diving into a captivating legend that has persisted for centuries, the lost treasure of Delbac. This is a story of Jesuit missionaries, Native American tribes, and a silver mine that may hold the key to a fortune. So sit back, relax, and let's journey to the sun-baked lands of Southern Arizona. Our story begins in the year 1700 at a place called San Xavier del Bac. Located on the west bank of the Santa Cruz River, just a few miles south of what is now Tucson, Arizona, this site would become home to one of the most beautiful and enduring missions in the American Southwest. On April 28th of that year, a Jesuit priest named Father Eusebio Francisco Quino wrote in his diary, we laid the foundation of a very large and spacious church. Little did Father Kino know that this simple act would set in motion a chain of events that would lead to one of the most enduring mysteries in the region. Thank you for joining your Desert Frontiersman, Alan. If you enjoy these videos and would like to help support my channel and time hit the super thanks heart icon on the bottom of the video, this is very helpful. Please forgive any mispronunciations. As the foundation was laid and construction began in earnest, something unexpected happened. The headmen of the local Papago tribe approached Father Kino with an intriguing proposition. They wanted to show him something, something valuable hidden in the nearby mountains. Father Kino followed these tribal leaders into the rugged terrain southwest of Back. After a journey of about two leagues, roughly six miles, they arrived at their destination. There, before Father Kino's eyes, was a sight that would change the course of the mission's history, a rich vein of silver ore. The story goes that Father Kino was delighted by what he saw. The ore had a distinctive green color, characteristic of horn silver. Impressed by its appearance, Kino dubbed the site La Esmeralda, the Emerald. Without hesitation, he made arrangements to begin mining operations immediately. In the days that followed, the rich ore was extracted from La Esmeralda and transported to the mission on the backs of Native American workers. At the mission, a small adobe furnace was constructed for smelting the silver. It seemed that San Xavier del Bac was on its way to becoming not just a spiritual center, but a source of significant wealth as well. However, the story of La Esmeralda and its silver was just beginning. Father Kino passed away on March 15, 1711 in Magdalena, Sonora, where his remains still rest in the ruins of the old church. With his death, the missions he had established entered a turbulent period. The years following Kino's death were marked by minor revolts and constant attacks from Apache tribes. Despite these challenges, the mission at San Xavier del Bac continued to prosper. By 1723, the treasure and silver ornaments adorning the altar were estimated to be worth more than 120,000 pesos, a fortune by the standards of the time. But trouble was brewing. In that same year, 1723, the first major revolt of the Papago and Pima tribes erupted. As chaos descended upon the mission, a group of loyal Papago neophytes took matters into their own hands. In a daring move, they secretly carried the treasure from the altar to the Esmeralda mine and buried it deep within its underground workings. This act of preservation came just in time. 
The revolt left the churches at back, Tumacacori and Guavavi partially destroyed and without spiritual advisors. For years, the mission stood silent, their treasures hidden away in the depths of the earth. But the story of San Xavier del Bac was far from over. In 1731, a small group of Jesuit reinforcements arrived in the area. Two of these priests, Father Felipe Seguesser and Father Juan Baptista Grasshofer, established what are considered the first Spanish settlements in Arizona. Father Seguesser took charge of San Xavier del Bac, while Father Grasshofer oversaw San Miguel de Gavavi. For the next two decades, a succession of Jesuit priests tended to the mission at San Xavier del Bac. They found that many of the native settlements from Quino's time had been abandoned, but they persevered in their efforts to rebuild and maintain the mission. However, peace was short-lived. In 1751, a second revolt of the Pima tribes shook the region. This time, the violence was even more severe. Three priests, Francisco Xavier Saeta, Thomas Rolo, and Enrique Ruen, lost their lives. The missions at Sonoida and Caborca were completely destroyed, while Gavavi, Tumacacori, and San Xavier del Bac were damaged and abandoned by all but a few loyal followers. It wasn't until 1754 that the native tribes returned to their pueblos, expressing a desire to live peacefully once again. With this newfound peace came a momentous event. The great treasure was brought out of hiding from the Esmeralda mine and returned to its place on the altar of San Xavier del Bac. For the next decade or so, San Xavier del Bac experienced a golden age. The mission prospered greatly from agriculture, mining, and stock raising. It became one of the most flourishing outposts in the long chain of missions established during Kino's time. But as we've seen throughout this tale, times of prosperity were often followed by periods of turmoil. In 1767, King Charles of Spain issued a decree that would once again throw the missions into chaos. His edict expelled all members of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, from Spain and its possessions. The Jesuits accepted their expulsion with dignity. Before departing, they took steps to protect the wealth they had accumulated. They sealed the mines and buried their treasures, then made their way to the coast where ships waited to carry them away from the land they had called home for so long. In the wake of the Jesuits' departure, and before the arrival of the Franciscans who were to replace them, many of the missions fell into ruin. San Xavier del Bac was partially destroyed, but it was never completely abandoned. The Papago people, who had come to love the beautiful mission, continued to care for it as best they could. The next chapter in the story of San Xavier del Bac began in 1783, when Padre Carrillo laid the foundations for a new church, the very structure that still stands today, noted for its beautiful mission architecture and still in sacred use. But the tumultuous history of the region wasn't finished yet. In 1822, the fall of the colonial government led to the departure of the Franciscans. San Xavier del Bac and the Esmeralda mine were placed under the care of a secular priest from Magdalena by the Bishop of Sonora. It's a testament to the dedication of the Papago people that despite all these changes, the church and its treasures remained largely intact. When the region was added to the Diocese of New Mexico under Bishop Lamy in 1859, San Xavier del Bac stood as the only mission in the long chain that wasn't in ruins. The arrival of a new priest was met with joy by the Papago. They rang the church bells in celebration, and many still remembered their prayers. Some could even sing at Mass. Most importantly, the articles for the altar, including, presumably, the silver treasures, were once again brought out from their hiding place. In 1860, American miners operating in the area reported seeing the treasure on the altar at San Xavier del Bac. They estimated its value at more than $60,000, an enormous sum for the time. But once again, 
conflict would disrupt the peace. In 1861, with the outbreak of the American Civil War, soldiers were withdrawn from Arizona to fight in the East. The Apaches seized this opportunity to resume their raids on small mines and ranches, and once again, the great treasure of San Xavier del Bac disappeared. So, what became of this fabled treasure? According to tradition among the local Native Americans, the silver still lies buried deep within the old workings of the Esmeralda mine. They say it rests at the bottom of a large stope that has since caved in, buried under hundreds of tons of rock and earth. But the story doesn't end there. Every year, just before the Feast of San Juan on June 24th, something curious happened. The amount of rich silver ore brought to buyers in Tucson and Nogales showed a marked increase. Most of the silver came from two or three elderly Papago men who lived near the mission on the banks of the Santa Cruz River. Many old-time Mexican residents of Tucson believe this ore came from the dump and shallow surface workings of the lost Esmeralda mine. It's widely understood in the area that many of the older Papago knew the location of the mine and its treasure, but they steadfastly refused to disclose this information to anyone outside their tribe. And so, the mystery of the lost treasure of Del Bac persists to this day. Is there really a fortune in silver hidden somewhere in the mountains near Tucson? Do the Papago elders truly hold the secret to its location? Or is this simply a colorful legend born from the dramatic history of this beautiful old mission? Whatever the truth may be, the story of San Xavier del Bac and the Esmeralda mine serves as a powerful reminder of the complex history of the American Southwest. It speaks to the intertwining of cultures, Spanish, Native American, and later American, and the enduring impact of the mission system on the region. As you walk the grounds of San Xavier del Bac today, gazing up at its beautiful white towers against the azure Arizona sky, it's hard not to wonder about the secrets it might still hold. Perhaps somewhere in the rugged landscape nearby, the lost silver of La Esmeralda still waits to be rediscovered. This has been the Southwest Desert. I'm your host, Alan, thanking you for joining us on this journey into the legends of the Southwest. Remember, sometimes the most fascinating stories are hidden just beneath the surface, waiting for someone curious enough to uncover them. Until next time, keep exploring, and who knows what treasures you might find. Happy trails! Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content. Hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.